<laughs> okay, we'll start the meeting. Uh, Waitley Select Board, of May 9th, 2018. Uh, first agenda item approval minutes, meeting minutes of April 24th. Motion. Second. Uh, motion approved. Move minutes approved. Uh, comments from the public? Anybody have comments they wish to make? No. Dan, no? Oh, good. Are you sick? <laughs> well, you guys are doing such a good job. Okay. But we like good comments, too. Yeah. Okay, moving on for appointments. we got several here. Uh, first one, Keith uh, Bardwell is going to talk about appointment of operator slash laborer to the highway department. I'll just, I'll just do a, a quick background. I'll let Ryan run with Ryan. I'll do a quick okay. background. Um, Tyler Minkowski, he, he resigned from the highway department effective at the end of April, so we had to fill um, that position. He was, um, he was at the senior operator laborer position. And Jonathan, Keith, Jonathan as the, the highway department liaison, Keith and myself have met. We discussed this and we um, advertised for the operator laborer position um, with the thought that we would recommend that um, Douglas Scoville be appointed to the senior operator laborer position and we would fill the operator laborer position. So we put out a job post and we received 15 total resumes and to keep Jonathan and myself interviewed three candidates uh, for the operator laborer position and the unanimous recommendation of, of us three is that um, Dylan used to Venice be appointed to the operator laborer position subject to the town's normal hiring practices. And that Doug is promoted. Yeah, and that Douglas Gold will be promoted to the senior operator labor position. Okay, so you also you also have another employee, right? Correct. Nothing's changing there. Nothing changing on, on that one, and that's the same position as as Dylan is, same title or whatever you want to call it. Yes. Yeah. They did it. Um, Brian and Keith did a very good job streamlining the process and. Uh, I was pretty pleased with 15 applications personally, uh, and they were they were it was a strong it was a strong group. It really was a strong group. The finalists were all top of the line, so we're, we should be we should be pleased that so many people want to work for the town of Whaley. Okay. Is Dylan from Whaley? Yes. Okay, I recognize the family name, but I didn't know him. But okay. So I would make a motion to. Um, Accept the recommendation of the hiring committee. Okay, second the motion. Okay. Approved. Okay. Thank you. Moving on, uh, next appointment, and Jennifer Reynolds is going to talk <coughs> about the uh, town wide flea market <coughs> slash tag sale. Hi, I'm just going to stand up so you can see me. Okay. Um, I'm currently on the Waitley 250th committee. Um, we're trying to do fundraising. One of our ideas is doing a townwide tag sale slash flea market. Uh, we were hoping to do it annually leading up to the Waitley 250th. Uh, we wanted to do both options, so if somebody wants to have a tag sale at their house, they can do that. We also wanted to open it up to outside people that are outside of Waitley. And we were looking at having a t uh, flea market at the fire station. We measured up the property where it wouldn't interfere with the trucks or any of their operations. And we were looking at 190 feet by 220 feet. So we think we could fit 12 by 12 booth vendors within that space if we could rent them. Um, it, let's say we can rent all the spaces we're looking at possibly making two thousand dollars off of this. Off the ten off, off, off the space. flea market, yeah. Like a like a, yep. a like like a, a conference would have a series of booths. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what we're asking of the town is to approve this and to let us use the money paid towards the permitting to go to our fundraiser for the two fiftieth celebration. <clears throat> What is the fee? $15? Um, we were negotiating even 20 because we're going to be advertising it. Um, we're going to be marking out the spots for them. Uh, it's certainly negotiable, but it is a fundraiser, so. 
And, and there is a benefit by having it town wide. Yeah. I'm confused. I like it all, but I'm confused. You were asking about the cost of town assessments? Well, no, I was, I, I, I heard 15 or 20 dollars, but what you, you're going to charge more we than that? We were looking at 20 dollars because for we're booth? providing advertisement. Per booth? Yes. Oh, that seems. That seems quite low. I don't know why. That's about what they get. Is it really? They, you, at Hadley, they charge thirty dollars. At other area flea markets, they charge twenty-five dollars. Some of those go for mm. Saturday and Sunday. We wanted to be competitive to try mm. to draw people in. So, so you're opening up to any vendor in the area that wants to set up a table at a booth. It, it would be on a reservation basis. Um, we haven't worked out the details because we wanted to get your feedback first. How many can you fit into that space? If, depending on the booth size, 10 by 10 or 12 by 12, we were thinking approximately 25. Um, whether we get that many to yeah. sign up, we don't know. Um, and you're just going to use the parking lot of the fire yeah. station? Not the field? Or it's a field area. The field, field area, yeah. not, not the parking lot. Correct. Okay. Because we need to leave it open for right, fire trucks say, and emergency service, that. yeah. So when are you going to set up, are you <coughs> setting up a tent for all these people? Right? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. They bring their own? They bring their own. If they want to pop up tent, which mm -hmm. would not exceed the size of the space, they'd have to bring their own tables. I think it's great. Yeah, the only comment I make is, is if you're trying to get maybe Whaley people involved to limit some of the outsiders. I mean, I'd hate to see Correct. 90% outsiders and people from town can't set up because it's already full. Yeah. Somehow control that. Our, our feelings, I think, were a lot of the Waitley people would do it at their house. That way we, oh, right. we would, but I mean, we could do preference to Waitley residents yeah. or Waitley businesses. We also discussed maybe the firemen could set up a snack food booth to raise money for themselves or... So the proceeds all go to the individual... The proceeds of the permit we're so looking you guys, for but it, come but to if us. I, if I go sell a rocking chair that I don't want anymore... That's yours. We don't split it with you or anything. Nothing. Just, we should split it with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> come to our meeting Monday. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I can add to this, we're talking about doing both a flea on the same day doing a flea market in the central location and tag sales around town. So people will have the option of either buying a table at the field and displaying whatever they want or setting up whatever they want in their driveway. But we would ask the town that permits only be issued for tag sales on that day for people who are participating in this at the fee that we are charging. We will then do advertising, have a map of who's participating that we will be giving out so that people can go to the registered houses. We can certainly, for registering for the flea market, because it's by reservation, Yeah, you have to we, we could have two deadlines on making this up. You know, the first of the month is the deadline for Waitley people, and then we open it up for outsiders. General public. You know, on, the, on the second until it's filled. But then we, we people also have the option of doing it kind of in their driveway. Yeah. I, I, I just follow up with John's is saying, you know, if he's got a rocking chair that he doesn't want, he's not going to set up a, a tax day on his yard for that. Maybe you should consider people have items like that to bring them somewhere, either a store society or a fire department, <coughs> anybody, highway department wants to have a I see. Tag sale display there and sell what's yeah. I suppose we, certainly we could do we that. could do something where if individuals have one or two specific specific items they want to donate, we could maybe have our own. Right. I love that yeah. idea. And, yeah. and then sure. get like you say, get all the profits. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. you know, we could donate it to say sure. the fire department. If they or sell I would suggest that it be donated to the two hundred and fiftieth, and that we the 250th will have our own table and right. sell it and sell it yeah. right. or attempt to right and you could also expand it to not i i learned a long time ago that i can't hold a candle to jen in terms of fundraising so i will be limiting my editorial suggestions um but you could get some of the farms to have a stand there flower yeah the that's stand. Yep. yep yeah we were interested in doing that and, and we don't want to just have like some random junk dealer. I mean, we were 
hoping to make it a nice event to make Waitley look like a nice place to come to. Yeah, I love it. Did we have a, we, what date did we have? We had September 8th, it's the weekend. After, after Memorial, Day, or Labor Day. With a rain date of Sunday, September 9th. Okay, yeah. Can you answer if I get something? No, I think it's great. Motion is, yeah, the, the money you collect goes to the children to get out of the celebration. Yeah. We're in the process of setting up a 501c3 uh, uh, for, for donations, so that money would go into the 501c3, which is the fundraising arm. Yeah. Any money at the end of the 250th that is left in the 501c3 will be passed to the town. You, rather than going through the work of the C, developing on C3, have you thought about just asking the historical site if, they can, if you can use their C3? They won't. Yes, they they would the prefer. They would prefer not to because it's a bookkeeping nightmare of the person who is all is currently yeah. managing. Yeah. And we and we have somebody who's volunteered to do it. So okay. Okay. if he's willing to do it and it makes life easier, fine. Right. It just sometimes takes time for the IRS to say to yeah. do the stamp of approval. But yeah. yeah. For the time being, we have an informal. Let me put this this way: an informal relationship with the historical society to handle cash flow issues until we are registered. Got it. Um, I think that's the best way to put that yeah. for the camera. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, we were really hoping to get this approved today because the scoop goes out, um, and that helps give Waitley people the preference. I make a motion. Yeah. I'll second. Yeah, no, I'm requesting the money going to 250 for one second operation. Well, I'm hesitating because I'm fine with all of this. I just want to make sure that we have the mechanics in line in terms of trans if 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 the idea Is the idea to transfer the funds to the 501c3, or is, or is the, the idea to transfer whatever is raised through the permit fees into a separate account that will remain with the town? It'll go to the 501c3. Okay. Unless it's easier for the town to handle it separately. The town has a gift account, though. Yeah, but we, no, we have an account already, though. We set up for the celebration. We, we approved at the town meeting uh, right. uh, money going into. Right, and we only keep like fifty, seventy-five percent of it. So, no, uh, and don't can't they just use the gift account for ease of? Who would, who would, somebody would be gifting the town money? Temporarily, we'd be the pass through. Well, you're asking to you're asking that the that the tax sale fees paid to the town be donated. To whom? My question is, does that require a town meeting vote? And that's just a question I would want to clarify before we actually make any transactions. Why would it require a town meeting vote? The town is collecting the fee, right? Who's collected? Is that right? Well, does the town have to collect the fee? Can the 250th collect the fee? You, the 250 is to be. I mean, as an example, um, the South County Senior Center. Yeah goes around to businesses and says, hey, will you give us $50 for who cares what? Um, the money goes into the Deer Town of Deerfield gift account for the senior center. And then when the senior center wants to spend money on X, Y, or Z, they just <coughs> do a, 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 a procurement process, whatever the Deerfield process is. But the Town of Deerfield holds, holds the cash For a gift account. For a gift account. Yes. And but it's just given on behalf of. I the agree with that. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Well, I think we're talking about tax sale fees here. Where presently, like if Lynn, if I was to pull a tax sale permit for this Saturday, where yeah. would that money come or yeah, go to? I think that money goes to the general fund, and that's what I want to make sure. Okay. Because any any expenditure out of the general fund needs to be appropriate. Well, okay. I think we just need to look at the mechanism of how to do it. I think we can agree on the concept of doing. Yeah. Right. But just the mechanism, I want to make sure the account is okay with it. It seems to me the mechanism might be that the 250th pulls a permit for, what is it, $15? For, the, for a tax sale, $20 for a tax sale. And, and then, but that's your tag sale. 
and then everyone else is leasing space from their tag sale. So they're not a series of permits. There's one tag sale permit, and then you're releasing $20, $20 space fees. But there's only one permit, so you, you avoid right. all that. But we also like, want to have that the ability on that exact same day for us to do the expansive advertising. If you don't not have a truck or have an ax a method of getting your stuff to our location, yeah. and you want to benefit from everybody coming in and just have it at your yard, we'd also like yeah. instead of you pulling the permit that would that fifteen dollars that would go. That's to the, fair point. We also right. want that too. So we both right. That's right. what and we're and asking you can't for both. Do that with my solution. Just that was just the right. Yeah. Unless for the time being, it goes into the general fund and then at a later date we transfer it into the town it can be done that way too because we're talking about a couple years down the road so well we're talking about doing it this year and every year leading up no we wouldn't need the cash right the next day. right no we won't right right so you have that 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 lag is okay can you look into this but i think we should have a little, what can we approve so that these guys can just the concept. I concept. Think I think yeah. yeah, we did. We, uh, I think it's great. great yeah. Concept. Yeah. We'll worry about the finances yeah. later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we can get the approval, so we can get it in the scoop and give it yeah. the residents Absolutely. the preference. Yeah, and then we'll figure um, out. What and we need said. some more planning on it. and be happy to come back and discuss it further. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got another idea for you guys, though, and it's a very cool idea. I I I saw it in Worthington a few weeks ago. They were, and I don't know whether I mentioned it to somebody or not, they were selling uh, sugar maples, uh, seedlings, for $5. And they were going, everybody who went to the transfer station would, would buy one. I mean, there might have been a couple people who were like, ah, you know, I don't want to do that. But it was a huge success, and they had you take a picture. They, they printed out um, little, little tags, literally, the size of two postage stamps, and you had and you took your picture next to it as you were planting the the, the seedling, and you did it, you, and it became a Facebook social media thing. It, they made hundreds and hundreds of dollars, and we all need more sugar maples in this area anyway. So you go home and plant it, and make sure the deer don't eat it. And I, I just it's just a, and it was e and it was easy. So because those things run like what 30, 40 cents. The sugar maple seedling, you sell them yeah. for 510, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Do you want to come on the committee? <laughs> yeah. No. No, because I want to stay married. I was planning actually yeah. bringing that idea because you and I had talked to town meeting, bringing that to the committee. Oh, did we talk? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. You had mentioned it then. So bring it into our next meeting on Monday. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. Thanks, you guys. Great. Thank you. Okay. Moving on, our next appointment is uh, Jessica Atwood from Furcock to talk about economic development planning for, for Waitley. Hello, thank you for having me again. This is a follow-up to what we talked about in the fall and the winter last year. Um, we prepared a presentation and some group exercises and small group exercises to what we talked about last time was developing a vision for economic development for Waitley. Um, the presentation is modeled on what an economic development chapter would look like. So there's a lot of data up front. Um, so that's kind of the outline and the framework that would give people uh, kind of some background and some facts about what's happening in the town now and what some of the trends are. Um, we then would, like starting on page six, start talking about what happened with the Waitley Master Plan chapter updates that was in 2012. At that time, the town did a lot of outreach um, had different group events, had a survey, um, and from that effort, there was a housing chapter, a land use and zoning chapter, and a natural resources and energy chapter. There was not an economic development chapter, but there were economic development goals that were created out of this visioning process done for the master plan. So at an event, I would walk through a bit of what was talked about in this, in this goals, these economic development goals, and what the vision was and how those, the findings and recommendations in that work um, fed into the economic development goals that were created. We'd also talk about what's been happening in the planning world in Waitley since then. Um, there was the Agricultural Commission brochure 
2014. There was a community food assessment done in 2015. Um, also, the Waitley Center Historic District planning that was done in 2016. And there's even, as you well know, things going on today that come out of some of the recommendations of that <coughs> town hall renovation project. Uh, there's a complete streets plan underway that could actually provide funding to do some implementation from some of those things. And then you get into the meat of what is the actual group discussion. So we would go over um, what is it that people, what does ec successful economic development look like in Waitley? What do people think that should look like? Uh, we'll do a group exercise where we have a lot of different what potential outcomes and we'll do the old three sticker game where each person has three stickers to pick what are the three priorities out of all of these things and we'll also add if people have additional things to add on to it a little big, big poster on the wall and that way we can see visually what pops of what really is priorities for folks. So that's the group exercise. <coughs> then we break into small groups. The small groups each have a map of the town with different areas highlighted. You can see it on the top of page 12. Um, and so we ask each small group to think about what are the assets and opportunities in each of these sub areas? What are challenges for economic development? And we'll ask each group to report out on what their findings are. As they're, before they start the small group exercise, we'll also go, walk through what is the current zoning map? What does open space look like? Where are the water lines? So people have that as kind of a, in the back of their mind as they're talking about these different areas. The next small group exercise is um, looking back at those goals that were created back in 2012, that we had talked about before. With our discussions, are these still the goals? Should they evolve? Should there be things added to it or taken away from these goals? And then again, have each small group report out. And then the final exercise would be, now that we've been talking about this and thinking about this, the ultimate challenge. How do you boil that down into one sentence? Which sometimes just doesn't work because it's too hard a concept to boil down to one sentence, but it's a good exercise to go through. And we'd have everybody report out. So from all the materials that would be taken, so each small group would have a FERCOG staff person as a facilitator who would be taking notes of all that. So <coughs> after the uh, event, we would take all those notes and take the information that's in the presentation and put it into a report to give to the town. Um, so the, the two asks I have for you are um, to take a look at this and see if there's things that um, are missing, things we should talk about, things you know, that aren't needed, and just give me your feedback on that. And the other thing I would appreciate is if we could pick two or three dates, and then I can go back to our staff to see um, which date would work best so I can get the most number of staff to participate. Um, and I don't know if you'd want to do this like on a Saturday or on an evening, or that, you know, that would, guidance would be helpful as well. How, how long are you forecasting this to be? Well, you know, it kind of depends on how into discussion people are. I wouldn't, I would say no longer than an hour and a half. And are you thinking about doing this in the spring, in the summer? We would like to do it before June 30th ideally because one of our staff people who's very good at this and was also part of the 2012 master plan um, development, she's retiring on June 30th, so it'd be great to have her there. Right. Well, just thinking, when did we do the one for the, the town hall? Was that during a, that was a weekday, member? That was a weekday, that was a weekday. Weekday? Yeah, well, we were all weeknight. Weeknight, yeah, okay. I, I think a weeknight makes more sense. And I'm, and I'm just checking my calendar here now. So you're looking at June, probably? Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, um, I would, <clears throat> I would suggest, because I think Wednesdays might make the most sense, the 20th or the 27th, that's just me. We'll be our meeting on the 27th. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, uh, we can... June's just kind of a slow month. Here. Right, we can figure that out. I mean, this is a lot more important than a select board meeting. Not that a select board meeting is important, <laughs> but okay. this is part of what we do. So we get offer the 20th or 27th? Yeah. As a Wednesday night? I just think the 13th is too soon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go back to our staff and see which one I can get the most staff for. Um, I'm anticipating having at least four staff people so that we can have, you know, 
reasonable size small groups. Um, and I'd like to work with Brian to get the word out. Um, I think there's a town newsletter. There is this week. Okay. There is. The, the deadline for the next issue is May 16th. May 16th? Okay. Yeah. yeah um, can you also make sure there'll be a school's bill on those days? Yeah. Because I have, with all, with all the false start snowstorms, I have lost total track in terms of whether school's going through June or July or August this year. <laughs> Great, thank you. You know, we could also do, uh, if you had a handout in town election, people would come the week before. Elections at 12. That's 12, yeah. If you wanted to prepare a one page or something, hand out a flyer. That's great. Like posters and something Poster. like that. Poster, yeah. yeah. That's great. We you could also that? put up a sign. Yeah. <clears throat> you said that was June 12th, is the town June election? 12, yeah. Town, yeah, June 12th, right. Okay. Uh, great. As far as what you're, you're doing here, <coughs> two, two questions. Uh, is, is there such a plan for Franklin County that would overshadow or contribute parts of it to, to what Whaley would be doing? So there are two economic development. Uh, one is a chapter in the Regional Plan for Sustainable Development that was created in 2013 or 2014. Uh, that has a large economic development chapter in it. And then we also have a five-year regional economic development plan. It's called the SEDS, the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. That was created in 2015, and we do annual updates. Um, I work on that, so what is talked about in this is very complementary to what's in the regional plan. Or the other way around, what's in the regional plan? Was that something that could be used in here? Yes. I mean, I can definitely speak to any kind of, you know, uh, anything that comes up in the discussion about that. For the data that's in the presentation, um, based on the conversation we had last year, people were talking about the surrounding communities. So mostly, it compares Waitley to the directly, you know, surrounding communities and the county, sometimes right. the state. Right. Okay. Yeah, I saw you yeah, your graphs in here show that. Yeah. Your comparison. Yeah. Because knowing what is planned, not planned, whatever in Deerfield and in Sunderland and in, cause I, I remember, I don't know if it was you and I talked offline or whether it was part of the thing, but <clears throat> thinking about, you know, economic development sometimes is driven by what brand you want to be recognized as in your town or region. And <clears throat> it would be nice to have a starting, maybe this could be a starting point or a launch of a, a, a branding development for South County, what do we, and maybe all county, but what do we want to be known as? And because that can attract those types of businesses, individuals, what have you. Or inspire a local person. Or inspire a local, whatever it is, right, yeah. right. Um, so I just think that might be kind of a cool thing. The other thing I'm wondering, <coughs> to help educate the public so they come to this thing inspired and aware how do we make, and I'm really big on this these days, how do we make the findings of the Rural Policy Commission known mm -hmm. and digestible for people? Because I think that the Rural Policy Commission findings are, for me, a little nerve-wracking and frightening because of population trends, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And it makes you think, geez, the, this isn't an exercise that, need, that, that, we, that we can afford to have take five years. I mean, we've got to start to act. And I'm just wondering how we can amplify those findings. Um, can we put the PowerPoint, I'm sure it's changed since I saw it a year ago, when Jay Ash was in town, yeah. um, whether that could be, whether we could link to that on our website or, or something, whether it could be part of the scoop article and link to the website so that people can see plainly, boy, this is, this is real. Yeah. I, I don't, do you have any thoughts on that or? So the, um, I worked on that PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, so it hasn't changed much since the, <clears throat> the work that was done last year. Um, it is on the Rural Policy Commission's website, which is a part of the state website. And I'm trying to think of if or where it is on ours, but we can definitely find a way to get it on at least the FERCOG website and then link to it and talk to about, talk about it in the scoop. Yeah, 
and make, make people aware, right? Go to www.whateverwhatever.com. Yeah. And because I think that really will motivate mm-hmm. attendance. I think it will, but I'm biased. So. I, I, no, I agree. I think the maps are pretty compelling when you see what's happening with rural communities versus um, all the <coughs> communities in the state and then also east and west right. of the state. Right, yeah, it's not just the rural, it's, it's, it's the, the tie into the, ur- you know, the urban anchor of Springfield. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very cool thing. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I thought of, it's, it's not mentioned in here to, to attract businesses is, is, is it appropriate for Waitley or, or, or the county to do, what's it, I think it's called uh, a TIF, tax increment financing, to attract businesses, to give them a reduction in taxes the first couple of years, and then it comes to full tax. Is, is that an option? And is, is anybody in the county doing that? Or is that just for large cities that have the capability to, or the flexibility in their budgets to come <coughs> So all of the towns and cities down in Franklin County are eligible to participate in, the state calls it the Economic Development Incentive Program, the EDIT. Okay. There's, a four, there's five million acronyms with this program. Yeah. <laughs> and it's part of the economic target area of Franklin County, which Waitley is a part of. So any town can work with a developer um, or with a business that is creating either a new development or doing substantial expansion um, to negotiate that kind of TIF. There's a whole process and you work with the state on that because it also has to be approved by the state. Um, the state is much more, I'd say conservative and um, lending out their credits for those types of projects. It's much more competitive than it used to be years ago. Um, but the towns can always negotiate to do that as long as the state approves the overall deal. And there's a staff person at the Western Mass office, uh, Deborah Baronski, and part of her job is to work with the business and work with the town to help um, navigate that process of creating a deal um, and getting it to the state. It's called the Economic Adjustment Coordinating Council to vote on. So some administrative law judge or something approves that. So as an example, if, if GE goes to Boston because Boston gave them some level of tax incentives, the city of Boston needs to get state approval for those tax incentives? Yes. Okay, I got you. But how does, I guess, how does that information get out to people, say, interested? Is it up to the individual, the companies or, or businesses to find that out? And do they know that? Or is it something the town should be advertising That's saying this question. is available? That's a good question. Many times um, a business, that, especially if they're a larger business, will know about it. Um, or they'll ask the town to say, you know, what kind of, what kind of incentives or right. opportunities are there? Right. And then the be- next best thing to do is you, know, you can talk to me or you can talk to Deborah Baronski and say, so how does this all work? And there's, there's a description of it on the, on the state website. It is a process. And so for a TIF to be approved, it would actually have to be approved at town meeting for the town or a city right. council. Um, so there is a, there's definitely a process to it. And some towns, um, they tend to approve TIFs. Some towns are not so interested in approving TIFs. So it depends on the town and oftentimes depends on the project. It's going to be pretty volatile at times, sure. I would imagine. Should we have that in your presentation somewhere as an option for people to think about it? If, they, if they're supporting of it or if nobody says, no, we never want to do that, then it gives us, I guess, some mm-hmm. direction whether we, can we want to pursue that. that further or not. Yeah. I mean, all those kinds of things. You know, zoning changes. Yeah. Right. Any of those kinds of things. Yeah, because you talk. Yeah, you show a zoning map uh, 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 for commercial industrial mostly. I don't know if that's a, a question or, or in the group discussion. What would you do with zoning? Or we, uh, where, how would you change? Where would you change zoning to attract more business? Right. And, that, and that could be definitely part of the discussion. The right. map that's in there, we we kind of um, I put boxes, like yellow and red boxes, right. on it just to make it pop because it's kind of hard to see um, yeah, with all right. the. The green on the on the right. Right. Okay. I love it. So the 20th, 27th, we'll find out if the school's available. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we can talk about other things to topical mm-hmm. subtalks. 
And you, you know, it would be great if, if you know, during the, the last part, it's kind of the next steps, what are people thinking? It'd be great to hear from select board members about you know, what, what you think are the next steps for this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Okay. No, thank you. This is exciting. Thanks. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, and, and we may have other things to talk about, uh, discuss uh, in June as well, so I don't know if we want to combine it with that. We can talk later. But then yeah. it goes beyond an hour and a half, and this yeah, will take right. an hour okay, and a half. Yeah, right, okay, it goes beyond, yeah. Right. And this is pretty important, so. Okay, uh, moving on. Old business, town hall project <laughs> update, discussion. Um, I'll give a quick overview. Um, I mean, the quick overview is that We've shifted more from the, the rough and mechanicals and before, far past demolition, and we're now doing more of the finishing stuff. Tiles going in the bathroom floor, um, walls are being finished, walls are being painted, those types of things. And then the next big focus will be um, outside, now that the weather's nice. Um, we'll see more work on um, the rear parking lot and the sidewalks, and the front sidewalk and the rear parking lot. Um, we should all be mindful that work in the front parking lot is going to be an inconvenience for folks at some points. Um, Fred and I were talking about it earlier. We want to get the word out in communication with the with Taylor Davis, who's doing the site work. That if there's times where people are going to be inconvenienced, we want to give notice. Mm -hmm. um, that way, we can put signs or post signs and help people plan um, around that. So. You might want to reach out to the Waitley Inn and talk about so that they're aware of what that's going to be as well. It's not just our residents, but they really do. They're an important business in town and yeah. to make them aware of of any inconvenience that they may have for their customers, um, I think that would be helpful. I'm also wondering whether this, how this plays, because I missed this part of the meeting two weeks ago um, uh, when when um, the, the, the person came in to talk about the post office. Yep. How does that play into this? Um, I have had a hard time getting in touch with or getting a response from the folks in the post office. When I originally reached out to them, the postmaster in Hatfield, which is overseas, yeah. overseas the Willie Post Office, was retiring, and then this, this other woman came in, but apparently she was just temporary. So last what, week, a temporary got, retirement? Or? No, no, no. The oh, new okay. person who came in was apparently just temporarily covering the position. So I've got an email. At the end of last week, they said, well, this is the new permanent person. So now we're on our third person who we're talking to here. Um, and I haven't heard back from Does them. it make sense to call the people in Hartford or no? I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I think... Because Hartford's responsible for Waitley ultimately. Yeah. yeah. We, we've had this dilemma in our building committee meetings of how and when do you involve post office or even if we do. And you got it. It was... Since we're not touching their operation, it, they're building it all, and town doesn't own the building. It's a historical society, and they've been in contact with them. I don't know to what degree, but they have, and, and tell them what's going on as far as sharing plans and any of that. Uh, we have not done that because I, I guess we weren't looking for their input. Yeah, but, but if we've learned anything from I don't know how many anecdotes about projects that go on in town after town after town, the minute you don't, the minute you stop being inclusive with anyone who thinks that they may have an issue, regardless of whether you think there should be, then a hornet's nest is created. And I just am encouraging us to, to reach out and talk with it. And you're not asking for their permission, but you're asking for input. You, they want to feel like they are a valued part of the town. Right, but we know their concerns so far and, and we're trying to address them and convince them that there's limitations on what they're asking for uh, because of the, of the site itself and we just can't make drastic changes like they want. So we're, we're too far down the road and uh, I guess th they're not the only one that we're dealing with for, as far as the butters, for concerns about the town hall. I, I, Except there's, there's other people in that area, butters, that have come to us and expressed concerns or issues or wonder <laughs> what's going on, 
and we've shared everything we have with them. We've got a meeting tomorrow morning with one of the abutters to talk about that. So they're one of several that are concerned. It's not like we're ignoring everybody else just to get the project done. No. I, I, I understand. I just, I just, yeah. Uh, if, if there's any risk at all that the post office would restrict operations because of what we're doing, I think that is something that we need to nip in the bud because that will impact a lot more people than just the abutters. Yeah. Right, but we're, like I say, we're, we're trying to... I, I, I get it, but I'm just... ...concerns, and, and there's always the, the negative that could come out of all of this, and them saying, well, we no longer want your facility there, so... So the last I heard from um, Kate Miller, I guess she was the interim postmaster in Hatfield, was that she was gonna talk to the delivery <laughs> The people responsible for the delivery, I believe it's, I believe it's a contractor, yeah. um, and I haven't heard back about any conversations that they have had. But in the meantime, I was told that this new person has taken over at the end of last week, so I need to follow up with him to, okay, to see where they are with that. So there's there's been communication, right. one way communication. If you could reach out to that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're not done. They're they're still asking, so we'll still be dealing with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, like Brian was saying, there. I guess people need to be patient when they get their mail and visit post office in town. And work on a parking lot, especially in the front, is going to be an inconvenience for a while. Uh, we don't know what it's going to look like for the end of the month, but uh, I guess we'll deal with it at the time. But it won't be done by Memorial Day. It's going to we. Expect it to continue into June sometime, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, new business, Scanlon Associates engagement letter. This is an engagement letter for Scanlon Associates um, to do the time. Mr. Girl, maybe you could schedule Memorial Day at the library. Not even worry about it. <coughs> well, instead of a dirt driveway. That could be a good idea. We're, we're talking with the people about that, so. With what, with, with, with what people about it? Well, the uh, Historic Society or, or the Grange that's in charge of that. We've had some discussions, so. We're aware of those concerns and it, location may change, but we can't say today. No. no. Okay. Is this just for? That would just, if you just, if you would just sign one of those, that's for? Scanlon and Associates to do the town's audit for 2015, 2016, and 2017. We've been in an audit in three years? Yeah. Is that normal practice? Um, I don't think we're required to do one, but um, typically we would do one every two years. Okay. And the, that was budgeted. We yeah. knew the cost of that going into the do you want to Budget process, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, <clears throat> this this will be funded out of um, our budget, right? No, there's a separate there's a separate budget line item for for audits, and there's I think there's around twenty one thousand dollars. Okay, so it's going to be more than twenty one thousand dollars, isn't it? Uh, fourteen thousand. Is it really? Okay. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Renewal of property, liability, and workers' compensation insurance. So this is looking towards. FY19, um, and this will be renewing our property, well, just what Fred said, our property, um, liability, workman's compensation insurance through Maya. Okay, you, you give it, there's a, what, a two page breakout yeah. of that's, that's, that's the limits. Yep, so that, well that's a special liability insurance that we have for um, injured on duty, so police and fire. Right. So the total cost for um, property, professional liability, and, and workman's comp was, I think is what I provided in here, 77000 That's before my offers us a bunch of credits in deductions because we're long-standing members with Maya. So 
so the cost before that would be um, seventy-seven thousand. It's the year before it was uh, around seventy-two thousand, so it's a six point eight percent increase from the previous year. And then in terms of the the fire and police IOD injured on duty insurance, it's a nominal decrease of a couple hundred dollars. So for the, the, the police and fire accident coverage, the town's responsible for paying. Um, the town's responsible for, for covering injuries to police and firefighters, and it's not covered under typical insurance because the risk is so great. So it's a separate pool, um, and this is provided um, through a um, is provided through my through my through Cabot risk. But that hasn't changed. It has not changed right. at all. Right, that's yeah. right. Okay. But this is only for a personal liability for a police and fire. But what about general liability for our general liability general insurance is covered under the the property liability. So which liability are you talking about? Professional liability or general liability? General liability. I it's guess. it's covered under our property insurance. Which is does that come up every year for for a vote or decision or, or what? Where do we stand on that? What do you mean? Well, does the board does the board vote every year yeah. to for liability insurance? Well, we have to provide it, obviously. Right, but mm -hmm. it's, it, that comes up there every year for it. Well. The town pays a premium like everybody else does every right. year, so yep. and we have the options, I guess, of continuing or changing. We could insurance groups. In theory, we could we could go out in 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 seek bids. Um, I'm told in the past there's there's not many insurance companies who who cover municipalities, um, but uh, we could. Okay, it, it, it's it's a process, and I'm I'm not sure that in the past. When the town has done that in conversations with Linda, it's been any less ex been any less expensive. Okay, but what what are our limits of liability and then policies? Do you know? I do. I have I have them in the in the office. We can look at those if if, if we want. What I, I'm missing? Do you think it's something <clears throat> that we're really we're overpaying or what? Well, no. I I, I guess. Bottom line, I like to know what our limits are for liability. What's the town limits yeah, for liability? Is it a million dollars for incident? Five million? What What are we covered for? We can go uh, look at those. Okay. Uh, and we're covered for if somebody does something stupid too, right? <laughs> That's yeah. a broad category. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, harassment, things like that. Professional liability. Yeah, professional yeah. liability, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, I guess I'm curious what our limits are because ne I've never seen them. Yeah. Oh, they're, I, I can show you them. We can go over them if you want. Okay. Moving on. Uh, review of procurement procedures from the 2018 annual town meeting projects. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page in terms of in terms of funding these projects. The town meeting allocated appropriated money for them, and. I just wanted to make sure that you guys are, are fine that we go ahead with these. <coughs> Obviously for all of these we'll, we'll follow the, the required procurement method. That's MGL Chapter 30B for supplies and services, MGL Chapter 149 is for public buildings. Those are the only ones that we have here. Um, and then on occasion there's state contracts that cover purchases. What's the threshold for going to bid again? Um, well, there's different thresholds for for, uh, for each one. Typically, typically if it's under ten thousand dollars, it's sound business practices. So I'll use I'll use the the the, the fence at the fire station, the eighteen hundred dollars. Yep. You just that's just go going to find a, a bid that you think is reasonable, not you, but an, anyone, right? I mean, that's yeah, that's in practice. That's what it is, right? Uh, the statutory definition is that you would periodically solicit price quotes to make sure that the price that you have is competitive. 
Right. But in, in practice, it's they use common sense. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the, the sprinkler system in elementary school. Yep. I thought the town meeting didn't we? Is that the amount we appropriated, 74, or was it? We appropriated 45 there. 45, and there was money from prior yep. appropriation? Okay, so that's the total. Okay. That's the total, yeah. So that's what would trigger that. And who's going to do that? Is the school system going to do that, or are we going to do that? Um, at this point, I don't know. We, I'm, we have a meeting, I have a meeting scheduled with, with John Hamm, with Bob Lesko. Um, on Monday to talk about next steps for that. I would certainly like to be involved in the process. I, I would like certainly like to, I'm not one to require, but <laughs> I think it would be a sound business practice for you to be involved as closely as possible. Yeah. Okay. I'll second that. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Okay, any more discussion on this? All right, that's great. Okay, moving on. Police department, part time officer posting. Yeah, so you have a, a draft posting of, of what would go on. Probably the newspaper and the website and uh, posted in the town hall here. Yeah. Or the town office is here. Um, he, he contacted me and I said, yeah, you should. He's, yeah. he's down. Yeah, right he, he needs to fill some spots on yeah. his part time roster. Yeah. Okay. So we're not we're not we're not expanding we're expanding the roster we're not expanding our financial costs it's just a, a larger roster. It seems to be harder and harder to fill the shifts. Yeah, I in conversations with Jim once somebody gains enough experience as a part time officer they are they qual they're they're more qualified candidates to find a full time position right. somewhere. So it's just like kind of cycle through. The way it goes, don't be surprised. And this is for anybody, not just Whiteley residents, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving on. Uh, declaration of surplus property, 2009 Chevy and Pallet Cruiser from the police department. Yeah. This is the, the 2000, this is the 2009 that's, that's parked out back that, All right. that the police department wants to get rid of. I know, I know that that we still have a we still have an ongoing discussion about about a third cruiser, but um, we'll have to revisit that sometime. And that's a 2013, um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But for now, this just concerns no. the 2009 that's been off the road for a while. All right. Does that require a vote or no? Um, it requires a vote to declare surplus property. Right. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion. Second. Okay. Motion passed. Uh, next item, emergency generator for Whiteley Elementary School. So through the work of uh, the water department in, in, in trying to identify ways to, to save costs for the, the water merger, um, there's a huge generator that could be available um, that could be sold to the town at a reasonable price. And they were exploring, the water department was exploring whether it could be installed at the, at the pump station, the main pump station, and it, it can be, it's a diesel generator, and it can't be located in a, a either zone one or zone two wellhead protection area, because it's diesel, so it can't, you can't store diesel um, there. So we talked a little bit about where could it go, and it came up that, well, the school, the elementary school is, is the town's designated uh, emergency shelter, and right now it doesn't have any backup power. And there's also around $58,000 sitting in that account from uh, a previous project that didn't happen. Well, part of it was a generator that didn't happen. Right, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. So, and that was, that, that was a specific purpose of the account was for, was for a generator. Um, uh, I'm told it fell apart for a number of reasons, but that money has remained in that account. And this could be one of the options. Um, so, and so that's enough money to purchase this. I, I think the the cost was around fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Um, now, not being one who's very fond of diesel fuel, yeah. 
for a variety of reasons that I would consider sound environmental reasons. What other generating op generator powering options exist these days? Not being an expert on, let's just say I know more about the environment than I knew about uh, generators. You could, uh, you could find propane fired ones or natural gas fired ones. At considerably more money. Um, I'm not sure. Um, At considerably more money, no. Yeah, you know, right, you know, right, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, compared to an, an older <coughs> diesel generator versus the yeah. right. They're probably pretty similar if you could find old versus old and new versus new. Right, but I suspect we won't find it. Right, right. But yes, so 60 to 80,000. Right. Uh, is there, there isn't natural gas or propane at the school today, right? No, there's natural gas. Natural gas, well, there's natural gas. So we have the moratorium, and that's what stopped the whole program. Right, but you can add things. You just can't add the amount of gas you require. You're you're, you're using in that moratorium. I think it's uh, by connection. Is it from virtual gas to for, for any new deployment? Yeah, right. I, I think even though it only exercises weekly, it's right. an emergency. Yeah. Okay. Um, but. That's, that's the answer we've gotten from Berkshire. Yes. And then propane tanks, does the, you need to just connect it to a tank. Right. Yeah. Big tank. A, a big tank, well, not a, you know, not a 250 gallon tank, I would well, imagine, but probably. A thousand. Yeah. But a, a, pro, uh, a propane gener generator can be converted easily to natural gas. Right. Once, <laughs> if, when the moratorium is could the diesel Listed. generator be converted? I don't think so. Don't think it's so. not very easy, no. <laughs> well. So, I mean, maybe it's worth exploring, taking a look, a current look at, at what the other options are for, for, for the, propane for the, and yeah. another conversation with Berkshire Gas. But for the price, I, I mean. Is this too big for the, for the pump house by the school? Proposed pump house? It must be, because they would have already looked at that. Post pump house. Well, plans. that's what Brian was saying. It's not allowed in there. No, no, he's talking about the I'm big pump house. With the big pump house on. I was talking about the one by the center yeah. school. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably too big. Well, it's just too big, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have two schools of thought on this. A, the price is a good price, and yeah. I, I think it could be a temporary solution. If it were a more expensive purchase, you know, cost-benefit analysis, temporary gets less appealing as the cost goes up, but it's a good temporary solution as long as people understand that if we came around to a low-cost propane-generated or natural gas, and if Berkshire Gas said, yeah, I mean, I'd like to think that Berkshire Gas would offer a... a, a, a a pass on their moratorium because this is public safety. We've tried that. The school so. tried it. And, and, they, recently. and they said no because they Just they, the they don't want to lose their bargaining chips. Exactly. Right. Yes. I, I, right. I think it's an okay temporary thing, but I think we should keep our ears to the ground in terms of propane tanks. No, yeah. If we do it as a uh, temporary now, we'll see how much use we get out of it. If it's never run other than testing and it lasts 10 years, well, fine. But if it's run two or three times a year for weekly times, well, then maybe we should look at something better. We have a lot of emergencies. And, yeah. and you know what, Fred, that's a, that's a, you bring up a good point because one of the things that I want to avoid is that this thing is turned on just because we lose power for an hour. Right. I, you know, I don't run out, if we lose power for an hour because a tree goes down near my house, I don't go out and run, run a generator for an hour. No. I live for the hour. Yeah. And, and you know, if we have a, 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 a disaster like the Halloween snowstorm, where we're out for four or five days, whatever it was, yeah, I get it. You turn on the generator because there are things that need to happen. Or if there's an emergency and people are being sheltered, obviously. But I, I don't want this to just be turned on, no pun intended, at the flip of a switch, just because it's there. 
Well, I think what I was afraid it has to be tested every so often. I it'll, 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 it'll run itself. So it'll turn on automatically. Yeah. You don't, you don't throw a switch. You don't, so you, you can't. It'll test the system. You can't walk up and say, you know what, I feel like having this thing on because we've been out of power for five minutes. No, it, it would already be on. Yeah. So it does go on automatically, yeah, it's all even on. on a Saturday where no one's... It wouldn't matter. Yeah, it, it tests the, the lack of, there's a timer set up. It says you've been down for 180 seconds. It fires up. And when the power comes back, it shuts itself down. Right, of course. But can that be programmed differently so that it goes on if we've been out of power for an hour or two as opposed to 180 seconds? Well, I use that. Uh, I, get, yeah, I get it. You get my point. Yeah, probably. I mean, we have one at my mother's house. Same, same idea. It I just, just wonder whether it could be programmed to turn on. With I, a I suspect more. It, it can probably be modified. Can we find that out from MJ from the Academy? I have no problem buying this thing. Yeah. I mean, I think at this point, it's, it's whether there's enough interest from the, for the board for us to spend time investigating this option. I, I think you should. Yeah. Personally, yeah, I, think I, think, I, think I think we should, too. Yeah. Before yeah. it gets sold to somebody else, yeah. potentially, or whatever. Right. Yeah. And it's very generous of them to offer, so. If you find some sure. reason we can't, we can't deal with the way it runs, well, then I guess we, we can turn it down, but. No, I don't think it matters, but I don't, I don't, I'm not sure it's still in the hands of Deerfield Academy. No, it's not. No, it's not? Who is I've, it? I've seen it. I think it's a local contractor. Yep. But oh, okay. It, but it'd be fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's see it from the road. <laughs> library, moving on, library sponsored events. Sip and read. All right, so. The library, um, had, had some ideas about how to involve more people. And one of them would be to hold their book club off-site. Um, the idea that, that, that triggered this whole discussion was book club at uh, Black Birch Vineyards. They would have, people would show up, um, they'd have a book club there, people could, I don't know if there's food that's served there, but they could buy wine. The wine and canvas kind of You get it, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, the library director um, let me know and she said, do we see any issues with this? So um, I checked with town council, liability issues um, with, with having alcohol, sir. I checked with town council that you could see the reply um, and he didn't have any issues with, he didn't think there were any direct liability issues um, with such an event. But he said check with the insurance company. So it would be BYOB? Uh, if the library is not PYO, selling, PYOB, purchase your own. But the, it says the library is not selling or serving. Oh, because they're going to bring in a third party to do that. No, you're going. Well, somewhere. you're going to the vineyard. You, you go to Blackbridge Vineyard. Oh, I, I thought they, that this was an alternative to the Blackbridge Vineyard where they would be bringing it into the library. No, no, no. Oh, I see. I'm you, sorry. You would okay. go off site and um, be at Blackbridge Vineyard. They're just holding their book club there. Where is that in town? Blackbridge? That's in Hatfield. Oh, okay. Um, so where the library is going to go sponsor an event in Hatfield? Well, yeah, that's point well, well, the book club. 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 It's like someone would hold a book club at the Waitley Inn, or someone would hold a book club right. uh, somewhere else. And, and the the question is, does the town organizing the book club event imp um, in incur or put at risk the town's liability? I merely hold the event where alcohol is available. How is it different than when the the fire the, the fire department holds a muster at Hurley? I think that's is that the firemen's association does that. Yes, but it's oh, still okay. being held at a town venue. Okay. I think we should be encouraging community activities, whether they're in Whitley or Hatfield or Conway, or I don't think I, I think we should be encouraging this kind of thing. I think she was being specific that it was going to be in Hatfield, just the general idea of holding the book club somewhere else. It's both. Uh, Hatfield, well, um, there were discussions about, about, about doing it in Hatfield as well. Um, so we also, town council said she wanted to buy an insurance company, and I, I guess to no surprise, the insurance company said, well, maybe you should just try to take the town out of it, for obvious reasons, for... for they write our insurance and they don't want any sort of 
claims to, to be brought against the town. Um, I, I did ask if there was sort of a, a, a Friends of Waitley Library Club, or not club, but a, a Friends of Waitley Library group that could... There is. There's a Friends of Waitley Library. That could... Yeah. Sponsor it. That could sponsor it. Yeah. Um, takes the, it takes the, the town of Waitley out of the equation. Um, but you still have Waitley Library on the, uh, on the poster. Um, so I, we have two divergent opinions as to We should be encouraging these kinds of things rather than sitting in our homes in our little silos and not engaging with the rest of the world. Uh, <clears throat> but why can't these events, this event be held either at the library or town hall or church or, or whatever? I think, I, there, I I think there's, there, uh, I think going someplace new is, might attract more people yeah. or, or going to different venues. It doesn't mean they're not going to come back to the library once in a while, but having a road trip isn't a bad thing. If it, if it encourages more people to participate, then maybe as you build a, a crowd or a following, those people, when it is at the library, will say, yeah, I'll go to the library this time, because you know, I like this concept now. I, I, I think the liability issue concerns me with what our insurance company said. If, if, if something happens to an individual that was at one at one of these events sponsored by the Waitley Library, he is he could turn around and, and, and sue the town since it's a, a public uh, Waitley sponsored event. Can you ask? If there's a different difference between the town, the library, and the friends of. In terms I think of there is. I think it would be. There must be a difference. Yeah. Look. But I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, what about the South County uh, South County Senior Center runs bus trips. It runs bus trips, or or let's not to use South County Senior. Let's say some some senior center might run a trip to Fenway Park or Mohegan Sun. Mohegan Sun it happens all the time. What? How is that different? Because I'm not, not sure driving. that it is. They're not driving. They're on a bus. But they can't guarantee that. Well, I understand that. It's a bus trip where these people are leaving that event, getting in their car, oh, and driving yeah. away. Right. That would be the difference. Right. So of course, some seniors may choose to drive themselves. Not if it's a bus tour. The, the idea is that it's a trip and you pay the price. To oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, right. Just, yeah. Yeah. Or, or any sort of sponsored events where people may drive themselves. Well, what about, and again, there's no alcohol involved, but with the recreation, the parents start driving themselves constantly to, to, to sponsored events in other towns. I think it's the alcohol part it's the alcohol, that they wrote yes. in. They said if somebody said a few drinks and then gets in the car and gets in an accident on their way home, yeah. they left a Waitley sponsored Sponsor event, event right. and could come back to the town. Or especially if they were minor and they were served. Well, yeah, but that's not, that's... But, uh, yeah. I, I think Brian needs to do a little bit more research into this. <laughs> what, what I think we're going to get two different I think we're going to get two different opinions. What are you asking him to research now? Because because I think the liability. Be... <clears throat> I think the attorney's answering the question of whether we whether we would successfully be brought into a lawsuit and lose. And the question is: Is it a book club or a drinking club? Well, but it looks. I mean, we're it, prohibition. Yeah, ended. What's the difference? <laughs> I mean. I'm going to go back to the muster. You guys say that the friends of doesn't doesn't amount to enough of a change. Five one c three, I think. But the association is the equivalent of the friends of the library. Yeah. And we never have any problems with them. They get one day liquor licenses. And we, and we never say no to that, nor should we. And they have, I, I think they're bringing in safe serve bartenders, and I, I think. What's the difference? I think that's equivalent to the Friends of Libraries. Right. Or something. So, maybe, so that's, maybe, that's, maybe that's the safest answer. Friends of Library want to do it, and assume that, that risk, for lack of a better term. Yeah. And 
we have no control over the Friends of the Library, by the way. So. But that wouldn't be a town-sponsored event, whatever they hold. Right. It would be, no, it would be a... I mean, let's not kid ourselves when, again, I'll use, I'll use the Firemen's Association. When they do the muster at Hurley, guess what? People, people equate it at some level with the town doing it. But legally, it is the association doing it, and that's where it's safe. So legally, the library association, the Friends of the Library doing it, that's what makes it safe for the town from a liability perspective. Right. I, I guess yeah. you'd have to get that understanding from friends of the library that it would be doing this. Well, yeah, I mean, they can, right. they can plan whatever they want to plan, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but I think it, if that's our preference, well, if our preference says it's a friends of the library, then they, they'll figure it out or they won't do the event. Okay. But the town will be removed. If the town is removed from any liability, yeah. I, yeah. But I don't have a problem that way. The town is the town is further removed from any liability. Yeah. Someone could always. You can never prevent someone from slapping your name on a suit. Right. Okay. But it is just think another situation. You know, the Grange sponsors events. In the center of town. It's Memorial Day is coming up. Somebody falls down on the steps from the center school. Well, or even outside. Who do they sue? The town? If they wanted to sue the Grange? No, they'd sue the town because the, the town owns the property. property. No, owns the property, okay. But it was a, it was a Grange sponsored event. Now, yeah, unless yeah, something the Grange the, gave them that caused them to get injured. The rule of the game is you sue everybody you can. Everybody you can, yeah, right. You would everybody, if and then you have everybody else plead out. Yeah. So that's the difference. It's, it's what John's just alluding to. Oh, everybody okay. and whoever within 500 feet of something happening is going to get sued. And it's your job to plead out in the lawsuit. <coughs> Fred, they'll, name, they'll name you and me yeah. personally as well as the town. Right. Because they can. Yeah. And it'll be up to you to, to file papers that say, I don't have any relationship to whatever yeah, happened. Right. And then we have the town attorney supporting us anyway. Yeah. Okay. So you'll find out if the friends, if that concept flies with both the attorney and the I, I th insurance. Yeah, I think it will. Okay. Okay, moving on town administrator updates. We've got a few in here I see. Yeah. <coughs> Winter Road's the first one here. Yep, so that was a transfer from the, the Finance Committee did for the reserve account to balance the Winter Road's account. Do we have to take any action on it? Nope. Okay. We just wanted to let you know. Okay. That that's been settled. Um, update from Nexamp on the solar projects for Hikoski and, and Kokot. Um, they're targeting the end of uh, 2018 or early 2019 for starting commercial operations. So there'll be construction before then, but when is construction going to start? Um, well, it, it'll at least be um, after September. Simultaneous. Yeah, September I don't know this year. Do it simultaneous. Yeah. Um, so right now, what they're waiting for the state the state's implementing a new smart program that's replacing the the old SREC programs. So they're waiting for September. Um, okay. So they can get a they need to get a reservation through the state under the smart program under the SMART program before they're going to start um, site work, so that's what's holding those up, but they're still supposed to happen. Okay. Um, at our last meeting, we wanted to get a little bit more information about the scheduling for the, the FERCOG electricity aggregation process that's happening. And I reached out to Bob Dean, and he didn't tell me too much about what's going to go on with the process. He just promised that he'd get back to us. Um, Other towns are passing the education allowability at town meetings on a pretty regular basis right now. Yep. 
um, energy committees from across the county seem to be pretty successful um, answering people's questions. We already passed an aggregation, aggregation um, <coughs> warrant article, yeah. what, five, six years ago? Yeah. Um, but that was specifically for Hampshire, the Hampshire COG. Okay. Brian, do you still think that, it, that because that was specific to a carrier or a whatever you want to call it, that we cannot use that as our aggregation warrant article or permission from town meeting? Bob Dean, what I heard back from Bob Dean, and, and I'm not sure, maybe we need to, maybe I need to find somebody to talk to at the DPU, but what they've heard, and he, he provides it here, is he heard from a few different sources, including Colonial, which of course you would, that the prior vote specific to HCOG is sufficient for the select board to move forward on the shows the town support of the process. DPU knows that this town signed up with the HCOG proposal were left out in the cold when those applications were denied. Um, so maybe we just need to ask the if we want to move forward with this, maybe the question, a direct question to DPU about whether this article is sufficient. Yeah. Um, we'll I think we need to ask that sooner rather than later because I think Bob was right. The time, the time is now to do this. And I don't recall that this vote we had five or six years ago was anything contentious. I mean, there were some questions asked, but it wasn't, <coughs> you know, people have the ability to opt out. Um, we're doing our due diligence on, on the organization that's gonna be the aggregator. Um, if DPU says it's okay, then I think we move forward. If they don't, then we gotta schedule a town meeting. Right. Assuming the energy committee is still on board with this. Yeah. But we don't know whether DPU has, I guess, uh, approved Colonial Power. Is what you're saying? No, they won't until they get a. Colonial Power is not going to go to the DPU until um, all towns, as I understand it, until all towns that are going to sign up have signed up. Then Colonial Power goes to the DPU with their proposal. Also, oh, okay. But Colonial Power has done this in other areas, so. You know, where, where the COG, I think it was their first, the, the first ride on the fair, on, on, on the merry-go-round. For Hampshire County? Yeah. And how did, how did FERCOG come up with Colonial Power? Is that the only one doing this? They were the only one who bid on an RFP that was sent out. Oh, okay. And Colonial Power does seem to have some pretty good chops on this. Okay. The Energy Committee's concern has been that there are one of two things, either you get the current mix at a cheaper rate or a cleaner mix at the current rate. And a higher rate is not an option. And a, a, a browner option is not an option. It's gotta be cleaner at the same rate or cheaper at the current rate. Otherwise, we're not buying into it. Okay. And personally, I'd rather see the cleaner option, but that's subjective on my part. But at our, at our last meeting, didn't we talk? We talked about this and didn't know what the rate was going to be until you committed. That's the process. And committed yeah. everybody. And you never know. What, you know the the way these work is that it, it goes in six months. Right, like it is current. Yeah, right, current bill right. So, months, but, but would Colonial Power and <coughs> Offer a rate that's higher than what, say, Eversource is charging today. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't know that. We don't know the rates, and don't know from, the rates. But from what I've learned about the process, is that you have about an hour to decide. Yeah. You get the rates, and then you have about an hour to decide. When we have an hour to decide, but if all of a sudden that rate was higher, and we and we accepted, let's say we accepted it, every resident in Whaley could opt out when they chose to opt out and go back to the default right. supply offered by... Anybody, yeah, anybody can opt out. Yeah. Right, at any time. 
Yeah. They're not I'm bound to that, that decision. So I would argue that if all of a sudden our hands were tied with the colonial power option and it was accepted in that, within that hour, then I would say that the town would in turn call, do a robocall to all of its residents saying, opt out right now. Yeah. Why would you have opted in? I don't know, I was thinking about, I don't know the answer to that, Dan, but I, I think there's a, because the minute you opt out, you opt out forever, I think, or you have, a, it's a two year, you're tied for two years, where I think a residential customer can opt in and out mm -hmm. in a shorter period of time. So if you didn't want to abandon the entire concept, I, I think you need to swallow hard, but I think you can alert your, I think, and I think we need to look into this. I think we can, we can alert, you know, the Dennehy household mm -hmm. that you guys should opt out right now and go back to the default of Eversource. And Eversource will let you go back? Yeah. They're not going to say no to a customer. And is this, is this apply, is this just residential or is this commercial as well? I think, I think it's residential. I think it's residential. Yeah. Residential. yeah. yeah. Oh, well, let me double check on that, but I think it's residential. So at this point, there's, there's no action to take. I just, just wanted to. Okay. Right, okay. To tell you what I learned from that. Okay, moving on. Just a reminder, a Complete Streets public meeting on May 16th at the town offices at 6 p.m. That's seeking public input on prioritizing street and sidewalk projects in the town. Um, and that would be hopefully with Complete Streets funding. Is there information out on that yet? Um, not yet. The, the uh, information is being finalized by um, for Kaka. Okay. So we'll see that before the meeting? Yep. Okay. So the select board received a letter from um, Catherine Fourier, uh resigning from her position with the Board of Assessors. Um, so we'll have to fill that vacancy by appointment. Um, so what, I'm, what I've been told, there's, there's a process that's laid out in Mass General Law in that um, the Board of Assessors needs to notify the select board of the vacancy and then the, the vacancy can be filled by roll call vote of the remaining assessors and the board of um, the select board. Um, typically, I think that the select board has requested that the that whatever board has the vacancy offer a recommendation as to who might fill that position. And I think it might be worthwhile to put something on the website to see to see if anybody is interested in filling that position. It would be it would be for the remaining time on the term, which would be one year, and then that position will be up for reelection at the time. A year and one month, whatever. A year and one month, yep. Okay, how, would it be a due date on the website? A response date? So, I mean, if we look at the, if we look at the timing, if we could vote to, to fill that vacancy on, on, at our next meeting, that would be good. Okay. So May 30th. So, um, when's the, do you know when the, the board of, next Board of Assessors meeting is between now and May 30th? The, uh, 22nd. 22nd. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday from yesterday. Two weeks from yesterday. So maybe we say in the 22nd. That way the Board of Assessors can, if there's any candidates, they could discuss them at the meeting. Right, okay. Or, or someone could go and talk to the Board of Assessors as to what the position entails. Right. Okay. We talked about um, a little bit. Memorial Day Parade is May 27th, um, starting at uh, starting from the church at 11 a.m. And I think all three of you are available to go. So um, that's good. You guys can go hand over hand. Who gets to raise the flag? It's always the chair. It's always the chair. Yeah. All right, chairperson. Okay, I'll be there. Um, I reached out to Patty Kavanaugh, but I have, don't have an update on the Boo School. 
Are they still working? You don't have an update that she didn't respond to you, or you don't have an update she didn't have an answer for you? I haven't heard back yet. How long ago was I, that? I, I, it it uh, struck me this morning, so I oh, okay. heard this morning. Um, the last I heard was well, last week meeting, they were working on the purchase of sale with their attorney. Okay. That's all they've said. So. But does it seem like they're going to go forward? I think so. Yeah, I think the school mm. committee is voted to move forward. Okay. Well, the subcommittee of the school committee voted. Well, no, I take that back. Yeah, they did, and I was at the school committee meeting the, the, the night before our annual town meeting, and they voted to go ahead with it. Not unanimous, but they did go ahead with with negotiating purchase and sale with, with the bidder that submitted a proposal, so. Okay. So that's in the works, so. Was, yeah. was there a reason given for those that didn't vote for it? Just price or? Yeah. <laughs> I get the feeling that, Dan, there are yeah. some people in town who genuinely believe that we should develop the property on our own. No, but he's talking about the frontier. Well, that was, cool. yeah. But that's the center. I mean, when I say there are people in town, there are going to be people in other towns as well who think that, we, that, that they could sell it to someone who's... What? Well, <laughs> that, that you get a better price. I mean, that, that the developer's taking us for a song. Oh. But we, we gotta look at what we're getting at the end. We're not getting money up front, but at the end we're, we're getting tax revenue right. on the property. And we're out from under a pretty big insurance yeah, I, I, I think bill right now. Favor. And he's preserving a historic right. building in town. Yeah, I still don't see how that's a historic building, it's blue. Well, but that's no, <laughs> but it's, the sign says 1910 or something on it, so. <laughs> I mean, well, he's I get the center, the center school, that's historic. Well, uh, we had more than one school, Jonathan, here. you got to remember. The blue school. Uh, <laughs> you think it was a blue back then? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Always blue. When did it get painted, Dan? I, I honestly don't know, but I don't think it was always blue. Or was this a, like remember. a high school prank? Oh, we're going to paint the school blue. Yeah, I don't remember, but. The town had more money when they built the center school than when they built the uh, elementary, other elementary, the elementary school. We have our, our third school is in West Springfield, right? The Big E. That's right, and right. that's, that's a beautiful that. building. That's a great building. Yeah. Yeah. The first school. First school. That yeah. was what year was that? That was. I don't remember. But I don't know. I yeah, know what it is on there, but yeah, it's. That's great. Okay. Reserved there, so. We're done. We can be done. Yeah. We still have one more. I think we're good for tonight. So our next meeting is May 30th. May 30th. And we're, the select board is meeting at 6 and there's another meeting proposed at 5, right? 5 for the water merger, yeah. And is that for a select board as well or is that water merger? That's just the water merger committee. Okay, okay, water merger committee. Okay. Um, I am on the fence for that. Okay, 6 o'clock meeting. You want it later? Earlier? It would have to. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a parent thing. It's a function going on in the school, so I don't know. What time is the school? Five five thirty, and we don't play it until six thirty or seven. So if we can move move it to seven, I could be a good dad and a good select yeah. board member. Okay, that's fine with me. Seven o'clock on the May thirtieth. Well, other, other yeah. than waters at five, we will have a. Yeah, I suspect. Well, it we may take an hour and a half or whatever, but. No, I, I think that's fine. We'll, yeah. We'll likely have a public hearing that we need to hold that night, so let's just set a time, a definite time that we want to do it at. What's the public hearing? Uh, probably um, a liquor license transfer. Oh, okay. A what license transfer? Alcohol okay. license transfer. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's let. Okay, May 30th at 7. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. And is Joyce going to be available? Do you know? Well, she usually is. She usually is. Well, okay. Okay. Well, that's the date we got set. Okay. Oh, um, I think so. She'll be back in town, whatever. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Motion adjourned. Second. Okay. Meeting adjourned.